my my art training is all done through uh, Florissant Valley Community College. Uh, I went three years there. I spent the whole month at Watch U. <laughs> uh, they had the same models, the same everything at uh, at Florissant Valley. So, and they had great uh, teachers there too. What I'm going to show you is more of a technique that I use. Um, I just started using uh, carbon pencil instead of graphite. Carbon is a, is a mixture of graphite and charcoal, and it creates a blacker black. Uh, it doesn't shine like graphite does. If you, if you do it, if you've ever done a graphite drawing and you hang it up and you've got a light on it, you've got a reflection there. So, and, and, just, and, so, and if you try to take a photograph of it, it really makes it look bad. So uh, uh, I changed this. I looked it up on the internet. Uh, a lady that uh, was drawing using these um, recommended it, and I found it at uh, uh, Art Mart, and you can also find it at uh, Hobby Life. So uh, that's a good pencil. It's about, I think, $2. Uh, but it's a really good pencil, and it blends fairly well. It's, it doesn't blend as easy as graphite, but it blends. Do they come in different artists, like uh, graphite pencils? Not this one. This is a uh, this is a 9XXB, but there are carbon pencils that are softer. Steve's got a few, but uh, um, they're more of charcoal to me, and you uh, when you start blending them, they tend to disappear. You know, it, when you blend, it just doesn't stay on the paper as well. This, this, while it get, does have a little bit of a, uh, a, a brown tone to it, I don't know where that comes from, but uh, uh, these, my Lincoln right there is uh, is an original, and it has just a little bit of a, I don't know what, it, what causes that, but it's just a little bit brown. It's a little bit warmer than and graphite is. Uh, of course, then when I put it on, when I scan it on enough in Photoshop and, and print it, it, it turns black again. So. Okay, uh, let's see. I, I, I've been drawing all my life, but, um, and as I read online, I had my little uh, bio there. Uh, when I was in second grade, um, my art teacher, my art teacher, my teacher liked. We were doing a play, and we had a um, <laughs> a big piece of paper that spread across <coughs> the the room, and we had little slots in it. We were creating little puppets, and uh, I was the squirrel, and we drew our own little our own little drawings, and I drew a squirrel. And my teacher liked my squirrel, and he came over and told me. Squirrel really looked like a squirrel. I was, you know, and so she had me draw. We, there, there was a picture of the world. She had me draw the world, and she had me draw most of the background to this thing. So that was my that was my start in uh, in art. Uh, when I I went through up to college and uh, was drawing all through college, I had a pad of paper with me everywhere I went, and. Uh, I used to love to draw trees. I'd go out to Forest, and, or, uh, Forest Park and just sit around and draw trees. That was a very lonely child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'd love to draw trees. Really just, there's a lot of twisted trees on Forest Park. Uh, but then I became a graphic designer. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of my attention went to uh, digital media. So I, I drew some. But I didn't draw near as much as I used to. I didn't have the passion for it as much as I, as I used to. And uh, uh, I used to draw things like, I did a, a, con, or a uh, coloring book for the place I worked at. And those are coloring book. But I didn't do this kind of drawing. So after I had lost or got laid off from a few jobs, and I was at home quite a bit, my lovely wife here, uh, challenged me to draw her a picture and she would sell it online and she would show me that, that I could sell stuff online. So I took up the challenge, I drew her a picture, which we still have, 
Madison. She hasn't sold it online, but it did. It did spark that uh, that passion again. And uh, while I wanted to draw like once a month, uh, I, I haven't quite kept that up. But I have drawn quite a bit, and I actually feel that uh, now it's I, I'm a little better than I used to be. I, I pay more attention to certain details. Plus, I using a new media that I've never used before, and uh, uh, I just, uh, it just really is fun doing it now. Have you thought about doing coloring books now, since they're so popular? That one, well, no, this is a coloring book for kids, and this is where I worked at a, a place called Cardinal Brands. Uh, it was a new, what they were trying to promote was the paper that it was on, because we developed the paper like a, like a sticky note but it was a card, uh, co coloring book picture. So your kids could color it, and then you could pull it out and stick it on your refrigerator without using tape or magnets or whatever. It was a good idea. And uh, uh, I don't know how well it sold, because I was laid off not long after that. Um, but it was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun doing it. Because I created my idea in this whole thing was six of the pictures in this coloring book actually created a big picture of the ark and and all the little animals in it. So that's what I got I had to bring that. Uh, okay, what I thought I'd show you today is my technique on what kind of paper do you have there? <clears throat> this this is just standard drawing paper I use. Um, to tell you the truth, I like my prints that I get printed through a friend of mine, he does uh, professional printing. And uh, the paper is great to draw on. I'd love to be able to use that paper, but it's just too expensive. So um, this is just standard drawing paper. I'm not even sure the brand, to tell you the truth. It's, it's really nice though, because it's perforated at the top, comes off real easy. You can make it into any size you want to. Um, uh, and of course, I use. I usually don't draw standing up, so this might be a little odd. But uh, what I'm going to show you is how the tools I use, because this actually, while it it creates the um, the darkness, is not my major tool. This just lays down the, the carbon. My major tools are the blender and. These will turn this. This lays down a uh, pretty dark, uh, as you'll see when I start doing this. I mean, it lays down a real dark image, or you know, what's the word I want? Uh, it lays down real dark something, whatever that is. It lays down real dark. Well, sometimes you don't want that real dark edge. You want to blend it. You want to it softer. Well, you can use this, and this will do that too, but sometimes this isn't good enough because it's it's too small. I mean, this is a big one, actually. This is a blender. It's just a uh, wound piece of paper. Um, I don't know what they call it. What are they called, Steve? What's that? What is this called? What is it? Well, that's what I call is it like it. a felt type material? No, it's, it's paper. It's, uh, yeah. Do they call them just stubs? I have some that's oh. thinner than They've that. They've got a lot of smaller ones. Yeah, I've got a bunch of Yeah. All different sizes, shapes. Mm -hmm. I used one that was like, it was like felt. Really, you know, it's kind of a <coughs> material. Yeah. yeah, that's a paper type. Yeah, this is a paper, total paper. And you can sharpen it. So as yeah, you well, use it, it well, it'll work that way too. Michael, are those drawn on that kind of paper, or are those? Yes, yeah, same thing. Well, actually, these two right here are prints. Oh. I just sold the originals with eight, so that one's not the original. But that's you said that's on they're prints. I'm sorry. Those two are prints. These two on the left side are prints. That the guy that prints them for me does a very good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't. In fact, I have to look at it. Pretty doggone close. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the, the only way I can tell usually is uh, the paper, the quality of the paper, <coughs> the better paper. The drink. Okay. Yeah, I know 
see that they're a different name for them. Is that just a plain printing company or is it you? No, it's a, it's a friend of mine who has bought an oversized printer and he does it as part of his business at home. Oh, um, at home. Okay. They're called blender stumps. That's what blender this stumps, is. see? It's a what? stump and a blender. This is a blender stump. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I do here too, and, and and again, I'm going to teach you my technique, which I've done with uh, Steve here. Um, what I've been taught back in Forest Valley is you work from dark to light when you're doing sketching. Uh, you work from dark to light, but you don't necessarily lay down the dark as dark as it's going to get. So I'm, as you can see on this picture right here, the darkest areas are this right side and right in here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll lay down the tone of these areas, but it's not, I'm not going to put it down dark first time. Because if you do that, you're going to, uh, uh, if you mess up, you're not going to be able to take it off. So, uh, you know, oh, and the, the other tool I have is an eraser. That's my favorite tool. It's the only reason I'm not a tattoo artist is they don't come with these. Uh, this is a pencil eraser, which Steve turned me on to. I've never used one before. Uh, <clears throat> it's just a, a pencil with an eraser tip on it. And you can get into the fine little areas. If you've screwed up and you just messed up a little bit, you can take it off with this. Uh, otherwise, I use a kneaded eraser that comes off pretty good. Or it takes it off. And then uh, just the gray, hard, gray eraser works really well with the uh, card. And of course, you can use it with with anything, but that looks good with carbon. Okay. So what I do is I start with the dark areas first. Uh, it, it's it's like when I'm when I'm teaching. It's uh, you start with the dark areas and you and you work to the lighter areas because the lighter areas is the paper. Um, you don't necessarily have to stay on the same spot. So if you're doing a, a, a portrait, if I'm doing uh, Lincoln like over there, I, I, did his, uh, I did his eyes and his beard and part of his hair, but then I got kind of bored with that, so I started, and I started on his, uh, his, his suit. You know, you can go back and forth, but I still go from dark to light. Uh, you don't necessarily, I see people all the time online, if they, they'll start in the upper left hand corner and work to the right, I don't know how they do that. But uh, I, I stick with the dark to light, it works a lot better for me. Okay, the first thing I do is, because I have the, uh, the tools, uh, what I do is I take the photograph that I'm going to draw, and this is just about photography drawing drawing from, from photography. Um, I'll take that image and I'll use Photoshop. You can use any computer program that does this kind of stuff if you've got a computer. And a lot of people will draw from a small photograph and just draw, you know, look at it. Like our friend that demonstrated before, he drew off his, uh, his cell phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can, you can do that and that's cool, but uh, I'd rather draw from actual size. And what I do is I, I take the image, I actually create an image on Photoshop or any of those photo uh, programs, and I actually make it the actual size it's going to be. And I'll print it, or have it printed, at 11 by 14. And what I do with it then, is I'll physically have a picture as big as I am going to draw it, and I have a light table, or you can use a window, if you get a large window. And I put the image behind it, and I put it on the light table, 
turn it on, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've I've sketched it just very lightly. So you know, freehand, you, you. Well, I can freehand, but what I do is is when I do it this way, I'm not actually drawing it so much as I'm just getting the dimensions. If if I'm doing a photo or a, a portrait, and I have two eyes there, and I want them perfect. You know, because Lincoln, I mean, if you don't get Lincoln's eyes perfect, you don't look like Lincoln. So, if I want it perfect, what I do is I just, I put it on the light table and indicate where his eyes are. I don't draw with the, with the light shining in my eyes. I just indicate the position of his eye. It's just like if you were sitting there going like this. You know, or using a grid. Some people use grids. Where you've got a smaller drawing with a grid on it, and then you've got a bigger area to draw with a larger grid on it. You're doing the same thing. It's uh, you know, people have asked me, don't you know, are you cheating? Do you think you're cheating? It's like, no, it's not any different than measuring your head and coming over here and then drawing it that way. I'm taking uh, taking measurements and. When I put it put it right behind the paper on a light table, I'm doing the same thing. I'm marking the dimensions is what I'm doing. And you, as you can see, there's not enough really there to. Uh... Yeah, years ago we didn't have computers to be able to make things to the right size. No, that's so true. Now and they had to use grids. <laughs> I know, and I did that. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. cool. That's a good Just way. Just new technology. Yeah, I like the new. Okay, so what I'm going to do here first is just lay down some tone and then I'm going to blend it in and I'll show you how I blend it in. And then, like I tell Steve, <coughs> I'm bringing up Steve all the time because it's his fault. <laughs> um, you work in tones and all the detail that's done on the, like Lincoln's face and the eagle's feathers all that detail is the very last thing you do. You don't even you don't even fool with it until you've got the tone down right. So what I do, and I don't know how this is gonna work standing up, but I'm gonna try. Michael, did you ever paint with colors? Do you I ever what? do painting with colors? Or are you just <laughs> I thought you were gonna say paint by numbers, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I do. I have painted. I haven't done. Uh, I haven't painted in a long time. Uh, I've done watercolor. Yeah, I did. I did some watercolor. I love watercolor. I used to paint on glass backwards. You know, that's, that's weird. Um, but you know, uh, oils was too expensive back then when I was you know trying to learn. So I didn't do that much. Watercolors were the cheapest thing. Uh, and I liked watercolors because, you know, you don't, you can't, you know, you know I mean, you can't really mess up very much, you know, there's no erasing, uh, you can dab it up a little bit, but uh, I don't know how to erase watercolors. So, I, I, and sometimes I do drawings like the eagle there and I color its eye. I've got a tiger with green eyes. Did you use a colored pencil for the? I eye? used a color uh, marker actually. I know. Well, actually, this one's a color marker. The uh, the one I did, um, one of the other ones I did, I used a watercolor pencil, where you can shade it in and then you use water over it, because the uh, graphite is okay, but the uh, there is there's water soluble graphite too. <coughs> yeah, graphite, and it works like a wash. Which I'd love to try. I think those eyes are interesting. I think you're tired, isn't it? Yeah. It's just gorgeous with those eyes. I, 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 I that's one of my favorites too, yeah. yeah. Just that one was mm -hmm. And that's I've done that on a couple of things. I've done that a uh, a winter scene with a fence and a lot of trees covered in snow and there's a little red cardinal up on the tree. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's kind of, you know, I like that look. How much time have I taken up already? Oh, oh. Okay, 
I'm just going to lay down some uh, some darkness here, but I'm going to do it lightly. And this is going to be kind of rough, but I'm doing it pretty bad. And you always go in the circular motion so that you don't get this, you know, sketching effect on there. See, I haven't even laid down any, any tone down here using a pencil, it's all it. I'm just picking it up from here and I'm laying it down here. Yes, I will. Okay. I was just, you know, you can... It doesn't look like you can do that. So. Well, you can. Um, what the best thing to do is, of course, not to cover it up like I just did. Because you're never going to get it as white as you really would like to have it. Because that gray tone is going to stay there. That's another good thing is uh, having an eraser shield. If you guys ever use one of those. <clears throat> the really thin, do you remember these? Use that in oh. engineering. Oh yeah, that's what I got it from. Engineer drawing. Drafting class. Yeah. But they work great. Just lay it over the spots that you're uh, wanting to protect. I'm so fond of my drawings from engineer drawing, I still have them. <laughs> 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 and I heard the push on I brought my tape. See, what I'm doing here is I'm laying tone on top of tone. It's I've established a. Uh, base tone underneath there. This is my darkest area. And then I put the other tone right on top so that eventually it'll get as dark as I need it to be. You're actually, you know, you're drawing it over and over and over again.
can see that this, uh, the carbon lays it down pretty rough. You don't get that smooth look. That's why I blend it. Even, even the darkest areas I blend. Just to get that smoother look. And I still want, I don't want that photographic look though. I don't want it so smooth that it's a, I don't want that, that totally smooth look to like a photograph. I like the, um, I like the sketching look. Look, I don't want people all the time to say, boy, it looks exactly like that photograph because why would they buy a drawing? They can get a photograph. Next project for standing up and drawing. Yeah, right. Is that when we use a jet engine to throw chopper of paint up in the air? <laughs> I'll come in for that. Do you have a favorite place where you get your reference photos or do you take them yourself? No, I wish I could take it myself. I actually used, we used uh, uh, paint or photos that he did. I like doing that. I, w I wish I could get, uh, it's like personal photographs that people want me to draw. I don't like the face on standard pose. You've already got that photograph hanging somewhere. Why would you want a drawing of it? What I would like is a, the candid you know, somebody laughing with their eyes closed or, you know, their head cocked back or something funny. You know. I, I like those a lot better. Do you sell very many personal photographs? I'm sorry? Do you sell very many personal uh, portraits? Most, most of what I sell are personal. I got two of them that I have to get done <laughs> next week. I've got a, uh, uh, a guy that saw a picture of an Indian girl and he likes it so it's part of a calendar or something and uh, he's having me draw that and then another, another one's kind of funny is uh, this police officer that that I work with at uh, Grace Church is uh, I've done photo, I've done pictures of his family before and he's uh, he wants me to do this picture of um, Lucifer and Michael, same same Michael or the Archangel, and they're fighting, and you know it's a real, mm -hmm. you know, uh, graphic picture, and uh, he likes that. But when I get done with it, he's going to make it into a chest tattoo. So, so. Good for small corrections too, because then you can just blend it through. Okay, all these, all the eyelashes and everything I do, absolutely last, because I need to still lay this down, all this uh, tone. Okay, now what 
I'm going to do here, I'm going to just lay this tone down, and then I'm going to use my uh, handkerchief and show you that how that works. Use your what? My handkerchief. Oh, oh, okay. It while the blender blends really well, this it takes out a lot of the uh, strokes. Never think, uh, never think to use cotton swabs. Uh, the little bitty ones. Uh huh. That would I would use so many of those. This is uh, you can of course. What about uh, cotton balls? I never tried, but I. Just my finger? Yeah. <laughs> if you lick it, it don't work. It goes on your finger, and then when you go draw, it messes up on, on the drawing itself, too. The rag blends in and keeps the, car, keeps the rest of it inside the rag, and you don't use it. You can also do some of the stuff from it and blend it. Mm. Now, that's just regular, like 140 pound paper? I think so. Yeah, I'm. You know what? I don't know for sure. Um, it is a, a specific drawing paper. It's made for drawing. It's a high quality rag, but uh, I couldn't tell you the, the weight or the brand. I've had for so long too. That I had 160 sheets and. And here I'm not, I'm not drawing in circles because I want that, you know, I want it to kind of pull back that way. And I always destroy the picture that I, unless it's somebody's personal photograph. I always get rid of that so people don't compare them. You know, I, you don't know if that eagle really looked like that. In fact, my elephant, the elephant I, I had here once. Um, did you did you find the picture of the uh, eagle, or did you actually take a photograph? No, of I the found the picture of the eagle. When they had Trump on the on the on the um, well, it's on some kind of news, and I happen to have it on the computer. And they had him posing with a live. Uh, they brought this live eagle in and everything. And I picked up my camera real quick, and I just started snapping, you, you, you know, uh, uh, pushing on my uh, iPhone and. Uh, I got some of the best pictures of, of the live eagle, and and one of him, and uh, he was kind of scared of it because he's having to hold it, those big claws, you know. And I never did see the mi uh, magazine. He's supposed to have been on a on the cover of one of the magazines or something holding that eagle, but I didn't go out and look for it or anything. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to tell you too, part of the technique, and Steve knows this one very well too, is uh, when you're doing a portrait, and even when you use this kind of method where you're, you've got the light table or a window or something where you're actually sketching everything in proportion, um, sometimes something just doesn't look right. I mean, you just know that something's wrong, you don't know what it is. First thing I've told him to do is, you set it down, and or you start working on something else. But you eventually come back. You don't know what to do with it. You set it down, and you just turn around. You don't peek at it while you're walking away, but you walk away, 
and you turn around at it and you look at it. If you, for me, I can usually tell right then what it is. I mean, because it's it's like you're not looking at it and you turn around and you, you see it at a distance and you can tell what's wrong. If you still can't tell what's wrong, the best way to do it, the best way to figure it out that I've learned from many years of experience is turn the thing upside down. You turn it upside down, then turn your, turn your picture upside down, turn your drawing upside down, and you'll spot it. It just happens all the time. Okay. Close my mind. Well, they say you can actually put it in front of a mirror, and yeah. that will tell you That's true. what's off. Because your brain is just going, your brain is going able link and able link and able link and able link. You, know? <coughs> you don't know why it doesn't look right, but you just know. Your head just uh, just sees whatever you've done and doesn't know what's wrong. Once you turn it upside down, you don't think Abe Lincoln anymore because it doesn't, you know, it's upside down. So. I painted this 30 by 40 foot figure and I, you know what I did? I put it in the bedroom, turned it against the wall so I can't see it anymore. <laughs> I'm so tired of looking <coughs> at it. It makes me sick. <coughs>
You don't go out of the ordinary, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, Devin yeah. might step out of the ordinary. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got one called uh, Beelzebub. I think I brought it in here. One third place or something. But it's a, uh, a drawing I did in my senior year of high school. And I didn't ever finish it until I found it one day in one of my books. And I thought, wow, that, I really liked it because it was so intricate. I mean, I used to be, you know, I was a drafting student. Yeah. And everything was real, you know, real intricate. And uh, my, again, my wife says, finish it. So I, I, of course, I had my computer, and then I, I fixed it. I started working on it on there, and I, then I <clears throat> got it printed, and then I colored it on that one. That one is hot. And if, to me, if you're doing a, uh, a picture for, you know, just to create a, an image, not like a Lincoln that has to look like Lincoln, but if you're doing a, an eagle and you want to make it your own, you don't necessarily want to always use somebody else's photograph. You want to do something to make it your own. Uh, I'm all for that. Well, Mike, isn't that one of the things you were teaching me? I was worried when I had the line that I was, wasn't was getting it exactly. Yeah. How it was portrayed, and you said that it's an animal, and animals are very forgiving. <laughs> Plus, that way, if you make it different, it isn't something else. Yeah. It is. So. What I'm doing now is I'm getting a little more detail in the eye than I would normally do. I'd get up here and I'd do the eyebrow and the skin tone, but I wanted to make it look like eye before I get it done. So, uh, so you're finishing more detail than you could. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get this detail usually this quick. Uh, I'd lay down the entire tone. The my favorite one so far is Abe Lincoln. I had his face completely toned in before I did any black on it at all. And uh, I, you could tell that Abe Lincoln was cool. But uh, that went <coughs> back and I did all the details of that. That's probably the, the one where I've actually followed my own rules completely. Like what I was talking about, like if you wanted to put that eye in a large fish bowl, <laughs> you know, and have it come down uh -huh. and really make it into something that's weird, but it's very realistic too. I'm into weird. You've ever done anything like that? Uh, I could show you. Well, no, nothing probably like that. Uh, but that's like that Beelzebub thing I did. That I did. There's um, that what do, you, what do you call that other one? The one that's on the motorcycle thing. Uh, the, uh, he's a he's a uh, like a robot type thing, an android or something. But I really haven't had the uh, the opportunity. I mean, the the ones I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to make money off this thing, so I try to get as many um, portraits done as I can. Try to get my name out that way. And uh, that seems to be doing okay, at least, at least for right now. How long does it take you to do an average portrait? You know, I, I have never actually sat down and done it from start to finish. Uh, the closest thing was probably Abe, Abe Lincoln. That one probably took three and a half hours. Um, the a regular portrait, depending on the detail. <laughs> well. Usually it's, it takes me a week because I'll put it away and look at it every once in a while and then go back to it and do it. But um, probably if you added it all together, it'd be close to about three hours. Do you ever get cramps in your hands? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I'm using this. Yeah. Those are, it's obvious you don't have arthritis. Uh, Not yet. 
So, well, I don't know. Standing up it. doesn't you feel too hot. Well, I have, I have just now been told by a neurologist I have carpal tunnel, <laughs> and it's from it's from painting and, and golf. Oh, yeah? You, you know, but oh, you had an operation. Well, I'm wearing these gloves at night with saves and all that and keeping my arms straight. You know, out to the side. He doesn't want me doing this and all that. The minute I do that, my arms are going to sleep The cool thing about these two is that it, of course, keeps the uh, the carbon on it, so you can just come back and recycle. You just keep on putting it down, you know. <clears throat> I'm drawing entirely too fast. I'm sorry? The eye color. There's color there, right? It's not just the eagle. The gold oh, in the eagle? Yeah. The eagle, uh, that particular one, I used a, uh, a felt tip marker. <coughs> I have a big collection of colored markers. But that one was a, was a, uh, a colored marker. I usually use watercolor because it's, you can kind of control it a little bit more. You don't, you can get a different blend of one. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot easier. Are your markers just regular markers or special? They're art, art, art markers. Yeah. I got one. I don't know what if I, I don't think I've ever actually drawn anything with it. In fact, all my stuff that I've ever gotten, like acrylic paints, I got a couple acrylic so paints, cool. but I don't use it, so I gave it to my daughter and she used it all the time. Which one? I'm sorry? Which dog? Oh, Anna Golders. She's a, and she's in uh, crafty type thing. And she's a very good artist in that kind of thing. She doesn't really go for um, and she's a very good designer, graphic designer, but she doesn't want to be one. So I've never been a quick, uh, what do you call it, a quick draw artist or? Michael's doing an amazing job, isn't he? Yes. Unfortunately, we're going to have to start wrapping up. Good. Play. <laughs> Do you have some final thoughts for everyone or some final questions from the audience? Well, it's, it's really funny because uh, one of the things that I totally believe in is that uh, my theory is that everyone can draw. I, I totally believe everyone can draw. Um, I think what everyone doesn't know how to do is see. They don't know what they're looking at. Uh, my, I did an experiment with my mom and dad one time. My mom said, well, why can you draw? We can't draw. Why, why do you have this talent to draw? And I said, I think anybody can draw. And she said, oh, no, I can't. 
I said, I put, I put a teacup in front of her. Teacup, she didn't drink tea. But she, she drew a straight top and did a little U-shaped thing and made a little handle. I said, no, that's a coffee cup, but that's not what you're seeing. You know, when I said draw a coffee cup, she went, okay, coffee cup, and she, you know, forgot about what was on the table. I said, look at, look at the cup. It's got an oval on the top. It's got an oval on the bottom. It's got a curve up like that. You've got, you know, your handle's not a one stroke thing. It's, it's got some depth to it. And uh, I taught her how to draw a coffee cup. She'd never drawn before. She'd never thought she could. But it looked like a coffee cup when she was done. And I think doing that with uh, people, I, I mean, Steve Steve had a little head start. He could draw, you know, he could draw before <coughs> I, I got in there. But uh, but shadow was something that he wasn't familiar with. Uh, there's a girl at church that could duplicate um, drawings. I mean, not drawings, but like she had a photograph of a leopard, and she could draw that leopard exactly the same size, but it was very flat, no shadow. And I taught her how to do shadow, and now she's now she's doing really pretty stuff. Well, I had others do shadow, heavy hand, one of the detail ways to work. Yeah. Uh, you know, but... Well, his, his, uh, his burnished, or his burnisher, his uh, little thing was all scrunched down because he just... <laughs> oh, well. Uh, any questions? Any more questions? Do you keep your drawings <coughs> the same size? I, I keep them a standard size. It's only because I'm trying to sell them what and it's a lot easier. That? This is, well... <coughs> I'm talking about the ones you already got finished on the floor. Those down there are 11 by 14. That's a standard frame that you can buy at uh, Michael's or anywhere. Have you ever tried to draw Frenation. something with blue pencil first? Blue pencil? Mm -hmm. mm, nope. What it does is that you can sketch the item and it won't mess up with your hands. And when you go back and erase it, the white eraser erases off. Is that like a drafting blue? The That's a special kind of blue pen. No. no, I've got blue i got an old mechanical drawing, drafting pen. Mm -hmm. Blue pencil. Blue pencil. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, blue doesn't photograph. It don't photograph either. You can make a mistake, you can draw something, go over it. There, don't shoot it. Yeah. 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 You can make all your mistakes and one will show up. Of course, your original app blew all the way. No, it don't. It don't mess up your hands. You'd be surprised. No, I mean, uh, won't, you, won't you see it? If you, you'd be surprised. Yeah, yeah. Really? You usually I'm draw over it. I like you draw it. over it. I'm just talking about you sketch out with the blue pencil. Well, actually, that, that could be a good something to do because uh, if you use, when I when I sketch these things on the light table, when I just do the, the preliminary sketch, um, if you use a hard lead pencil, it, no matter how soft you use it, it leaves a ridge. It leaves it, an, an indentation in the paper. And when you go over it and you're using your uh, blender and you blend over it, you see that, that pencil mark. So you have to you have to be careful to use a, a soft lead pencil so it doesn't leave that ridge. And you can, of course, you're blending it out eventually. But the uh, the little the little uh, lines with a hard lead pencil will show up. I also understand that they're not making lead pencils anymore because they have lead in them. Well, I I really don't use lead pencils. Anymore. I'm just saying that yeah, they've gone away from lead because they're sure. poison now. They don't, they don't have lead in them. Yeah, oh, okay. Any other questions? Well, let's give Michael a nice round of applause for coming out. I think he did an amazing job, don't you think? Yes. 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 How often do you change your handkerchief? I have never changed my handkerchief. Uh, I have never changed my handkerchief. Say you probably use it for different shades and tones and stuff. No, yeah, you just find a really dark spot and use that. Focused in North St. Louis County, Northside Art Association is a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization that serves local artists through community exposure, 
networking, education, and peer interaction. Learn more about Northside Art Association at www.northsideartassociation.org.